uh, as a major part to play in that. So, and we've been quite successful since uh, since the turn of the year. So, um, it's been a, a really fruitful three months. We're hoping we can uh, push that on to four, five months. But um, yeah, it's been listen. It's 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 been brilliant. It's it's been a really tough, tough um, 12, 18 months at the football club. We've come through an awful lot. Uh, not not to mention finances and and injuries and losing players and relegation threatens. Uh, there's been an awful lot to deal with. And hopefully we have. Hopefully we'll come out the other end of that. Um, and we're well on the way. We're well on the way to uh, to addressing all of those factors and bringing a, a feel-good factor and, and hopefully presenting the, the fan base with a successful football club and getting them back to really where they deserve because they are uh, a lot of fellow Celts, the Welsh. They are a really, really passionate fan base. So, um, yeah, listen, I, I, I enjoy it. I love it. I fit in really, really well. And we're uh, we're looking forward, to, as you quite rightly say, we're looking forward to a strong finish to the end of the season. I suppose, Graham, uh, in terms of uh, League Two now, in terms of the standard uh, throughout the league, we all know uh, the English game is developing and it's it's a funnel system, it's falling down. So the leagues each year are getting better and better. The quality uh, is getting a higher level. The standard is raising. You have top uh, youngsters coming down the pyramid in terms of the loan scheme bracket. How would you think now the standard, say, of uh, League Two to League One? Is there little, a little between most sides? maybe in the bottom half of a League One compared to League Two? Is there not that big big of a gap? But we all know the big, powerful names of your Derby Counties and your Portsmouth and uh, teams like this. But when we look maybe further down the the, per, the the league table in League One, is it pretty much evens itself out with maybe League Two? Is that a fair assessment? Well, I, I'm, a big, uh, I'm a big believer um, in the division League One, League Two, it's being over the last number of years, it's it's growing into probably two divisions in one. So if you like the the, the separation of 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 uh, eight, ten, twelve teams, so you've got a, a top twelve, a top eight, top ten, and then you'll always have a bottom uh, eight, ten. I suppose that is just the way uh, the leagues have always been, but it's becoming more and more apparent over the last uh, the last four, five, six years. That there is a there is certainly a split in both divisions. That there's certainly a top twelve uh, bracket and there's certainly a bottom twelve bracket. And that might come down to finances. That might come down to budgets. That might come down to personnel. And that might come down to facilities. And um, a lot of the League One clubs are investing heavily in facilities. A lot of them are investing heavily in their budgets and their uh, their playing squads because the rewards of getting out of of uh, the divisions now is is huge and the fan bases that that the away fans carry uh, and so forth and the prize money the sky sky money as well it's huge so yeah there's a big emphasis on success there's a big emphasis on promotion there's a big emphasis on moving up the football period pyramid as you quite rightly said and I think everybody's end goal is obviously to play and compete in the championship so um, it's it's tough it's tough I look at my old club Plymouth Argyle who got out of the League One last season and they've had to then go off and buy a couple of players um, and, and the two three players they went off and bought they, they spent a million pounds 1.5 million on each of the players so that's a serious outlay for, uh, for a club like that and they're still um, bottom, bottom three, or bottom six, sorry, bottom seven of the uh, of the championship. So money doesn't guarantee su- success. Yes, but um, it, I get that. But facilities are playing a major part in in clubs climbing the divisions, and, and not only that, the the finances to strengthen squads, and with the amount of games the teams play in the English Football League and the cup competitions you need a strong squad you need depth of a squad you need a really uh, you need you need numbers you need bodies to uh, to help you and uh, if you don't have them numbers if you don't have that depth in a squad you will struggle and um, you will pick up injuries because of the demand on players so we're going into Saturday we're still six seven weeks short at the end of the season we've eight games left Saturday will be our 50th game we will play 57 games um, before the season is out, which is a remarkable amount of games to be playing, so where uh, you can you can understand why the depth of squad and why the investment in uh, in budgets is uh, is so so important. 
Yeah. So I, I, you mentioned that about the, the, the schedule and the rigorous uh, demands of the schedule. Is it almost important now for a clubs like Newport County to really put an awful lot of emphasis in their under-23 team or their reserve team, if they do have a team like that, and to make sure that they're almost playing at a level not far off the sort of first team that a manager can go in at any stage and dip in and say, right, guys, go to his reserves, he's under 23 management and say, listen, who's who's ready to step in? Or who's ready to m- make that uh, extra uh, sub on the bench? Who's ready for to be that 16 that I might need to call for the last five or 10 minutes of this uh, tree, t- tree run uh, game within the space of seven days? So, so it, is, it, is there an awful lot of investment for clubs like Newport County going in even to the, the underage team below it, maybe not finances, but in terms of facilities and coaching in terms of that, because a manager might at certain points to the stage and may, may, may need to rely on that. Yep. Hello, Graham. I didn't get the, I didn't get the question. Okay. James. Yeah. So, lost. Th- yeah, so Graham, what I was just asking you about was uh, in terms of the, the reserve teams, the reserve teams at most clubs, uh, in terms of the, the time and the effort that goes into it. You mentioned about the demands of the schedule and the budgets uh, in terms of clubs. Is there extra emphasis going in now to the reserve teams and under-23 teams to, to get them playing near enough level to the first team as if possible. So a manager, if he has a three-game stretch where he's three games over seven days or something, they can go to his reserve or academy manager and say, listen, I need two buys. Which two are ready to step up for me? They might get 10 minutes here, eight minutes here, so on. Is is that coming even more and more important now that the the, the, the underage team nearly has to be at a par to the first team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, I think um, the academies and the 21s um, used to be reserves, but the 21s or 23s used to be 23s as well. They're now on the 21s. So, yeah, the uh, the academy and the 21s have to be aligned and they have to be um, same, obviously, shape, fitness levels, game plans, uh, the, the set pieces, everything, the fine detail. That all has to be aligned and they all have to be singing off the one hymn sheet because, as you quite rightly say, with the amount of games that has played over in, uh, in the EFL, with all the cup games and all that, they, they will be needed to players and you do you do tend to give players them opportunities in the EFL Cup and in the League Cup, the FA Cups and, and so forth. Um, you can't afford to carry the 25, 26, 27-man squads uh, particularly us at Newport. So our, our importance, the importance and the emphasis we place on the academy, mm-hmm. on the U team um, and on the reserves is massive. We've had to shop around differently because we don't have the best of academy set up. We're a cat four academy, which is not obviously as high as we would like. So naturally the players there are not going to be able to step in to, uh, to our first team. So we've... Uh, thinking outside the box we probably one of our signings uh, from Dublin um, Shelbourne uh, was Josh Seabury so we've had to, had to maybe slightly think outside the box and maybe shop in a different market so far as air finances would allow us to so uh, we don't really have the finance or the, the facilities whereby the U team will be training on the same uh, the same pitches as us um, so we're probably slightly different to a lot of the a lot of the clubs up and down the country. The one common trend and common team you will find with the U team and the twenty ones, they'll normally play or they'll normally train on the same pitches as the first team. You'll normally have a tacky defence. You'll normally have an offensive session and a defensive session going on at some stage during the game, whereby the youth players will go up against the first team players or vice versa. So um yeah that's 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 a, another way of of getting them up to speed if you like. But there is a number of clubs in probably league 1 and probably league 2 most certainly league 2 that can't afford that uh, luxury that can't have that quality in their youth setup and that can't have that facility to allow those uh, those sessions and and those uh those philosophies to take place and and, and to carry them out. So um you uh you naturally just cut your cloth accordingly. So we tend to bring the lads across and train with us on a couple of occasions. Well, well, we bring two, three kids across to train with us each week, different kids, so they know, they get a feel for what we do and, and they know how we do it. And we have to go out and watch the youths play. We have to go and watch them train and we have to go to them rather than them come to us 
just purely and simply because of the facilities. And now our kids are nowhere near ready to come into Air Force team. So therefore, we are stretched. And you may have noticed, and people of, of uh, fan, their fan base would have certainly noticed, we are going into games, a number of games. We have done September, October, November, whereby we could only fit three or four players, three or four names on the bench. And that's very, very hard to stay competitive. That's very, very hard to pick up points. And that's very, very difficult to be uh, in that situation as a manager, as a football club or as a group of players, because their youth team is just simply not good enough to uh, to come in and compete with their lads for a first-team place. I suppose, Graham, you mentioned that. And I suppose clubs will have their own philosophies and clubs will like to stay independent. But in terms of maybe forming a link with a club higher up the ladder in terms of a, a loan sort of system, in terms of that, maybe to the benefit to stretch the squad, is would that be beneficial for Newport? Or obviously, does that do, do those clubs put demands in on you as a manager and maybe on Newport to give those players a certain amount of time where uh, it, it might be feasible or it might be in the best interests of Newport County if you had that sort of link up there I say well we we have to have that link because obviously we we've got a play we've got a we've got a squad of uh, 23 players 23 first team players now that includes four if you want to go five players on the 21s development players call them call them on the 21s but uh, that includes five youth team players so and two goalies, uh, two senior goalies. So we're a squad of 23, 24 players. Uh, 24 is the maximum we can have um, in any budget. So of that 24, you will you will obviously have the uh, the breakdown as to senior players. You'll have probably six to eight senior players. You'll have probably six to eight lads that are have come from the Welsh Premier, the Welsh non-league system that have come in. We've given them opportunity and chance. And you'll probably have, uh, well, you'll definitely have five loans as well. So our squad is made up of the categories we can fit the players into. Um, and again, you'll obviously have the five under 21 players that we're trying to trying to develop, we're trying to push on, we're trying to coach and hopefully somewhere down the line we can sell them on and we can make a profit. But we have to all, uh, operate with five loan players um, over the course of each season, traditionally, historically and, and even currently. We uh, we have five loan players in our squad um, and we always, we always, we'll always have to have that in our squad. That is just the, uh, the infrastructure, the finance, that is just the, uh, the, the, the shape of our budget. We've now recently, over the last three months, had a new owner, which hopefully that mindset, that mentality might change, whereby he, we, he may allow us to, to spend a little bit extra on, on a squad. He may allow us to bring a bigger squad together um, of, of, of more depth and of more quality. And the big thing for the new owner, I know, will be delving into the academy to try to make the academy stronger, to try and invest in, in that academy and to make the facility better the coaching system and the expertise, the knowledge and the experience that we have at academy level, trying to make that better. So somewhere along the line in a number of years in the future, we'll be able to sell, produce, promote and sell. So, yeah, listen, it's 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 extremely different circumstances here at Newport than it is to uh, to a lot of other football clubs. It's, it's one which we relish, it's one which we love because it's a massive, massive challenge. Um, if you are higher up the football pyramid, it would be playing sailing and easy. Everybody would train and use the same facilities. Everybody would be singing off the one hymn sheet. Everybody would be training together. Everybody would be walking towards the same, uh, the, 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 the same common goal. Where this is, uh, I'm not saying we're not walking towards the same common goal here at this club, but it's it's very very difficult and it's uh, very very difficult circumstances to get everything aligned at this football club. And um, so again, immediately I'll be judged on first team results, first team. Uh, First team fixtures and results, so I obviously have to concentrate solely and 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 wholeheartedly on that. But yeah, we do. Myself and Joe Dunn, my assistant, have got a, a rich history of of development. We have a development background, um, and, we, and and a really successful recruitment and development background. Uh, I, I might add as well. So yeah, we concentrate on that quite a lot and we want to fix that side of the club and we want to help build and grow that academy side of the club but it's not always as plain sailing and as easy it's a lot easier said than done to be honest 
And I suppose, Graham, I suppose in terms of last year we had in the terms of the Conference League, we got probably records viewing we, uh, in terms of TV sort of viewing, uh, in terms of sponsorship deals, in terms of clubs having the focus and you know, the lights uh, put on them and showcase and maybe extra coppers coming into those conference clubs solely because, dare I say, people don't want to talk about but the glamorous owners that Wrexham uh, had in terms of the American sort of actors draw drew a big sort of a fan base. Now, Wrexham are in your division this year and obviously with that as well, it's brought an extra peering eyes, geek gawking eyes to League Two in terms of checking it out, in terms of maybe extra TV cameras and maybe extra sort of footage and highlights and stuff like that. But I suppose any promotion for the lower leagues of England is good promotion in terms of, I know you would love to have be in the position which Wrexham found themselves in now in terms of the good factor and the field hype. But instead, it's probably still bringing an awful lot of eyes on League Two and it's probably bringing a, a bit of revenue and the, maybe a bit of the TV cameras coming the way that probably wouldn't have, dare I say. But it's good to see that bit of promotion and publicity, dare I say, uh, in terms of uh, League Two. And because no, no, lowly behold, you would have to be a Bolton Wanderers or a Derby County or a Wigan or a Reading, dare I say, maybe in League One for the cameras to come uh, calling. But there's more cameras <laughs> coming calling these days to League Two, which obviously means uh, a bit more pocket coming in the turnstiles. The profile, the profile of League Two has gone, has risen, and has uh, has has rocketed, obviously, and that was a lot. Of that is down to the the owners, the ownership, the models that the, the clubs are producing, and I also say the quality of player that's been produced in League produced in League Two is 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 better. Um, not only developing, but what we're actually getting down from Championship and down from League One, we have uh, our own James McLean, who's a uh, hundred caps for Ireland playing at League Two level. You know, so so the quality of player here on Westwood, another one that we we'll all know from our home as well, playing that crew. So you have those type of players that are filtering down. The filtering down system is, has been really, really, and has really, really enhanced League One and League Two. The new owners coming in. The publicity that they've they've been captured, and the, the selling the, the documentation, the the Netflix documents, and and all sorts of marketing, and strategies that they use has been really enhancing, and it's it's been really profitable as well for a lot of clubs in League Two. So so that's brilliant, and 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 there's some great great stories and great tales there to be to be had, which we all enjoy listening to. But for for us, the football league money, the finances that has come in has risen again. So. You know, we're on every Saturday evening um, at nine o'clock, the EFL show, the Football League show um, on, on ITV4 over yeah. here. So that helps as well. Um, so, yes, the publicity that we're getting, Sky take all the games um, so they can show all the goals as well. So we are getting a lot of publicity. We are getting um, our, our name and our brand out there as well. So that always helps the finances. That always helps money coming in. And the Product we've got on show now at this moment in time on the grass. Our gates have gone from when we came into the club at first. The gates were only three and a half thousand. Air gates are now five, five and a half thousand. So that has been huge for this football club as well. So um, the product that's on show on the pitch on a Saturday afternoon is, uh, is is much, much better and much more enjoyable. And that's not being disrespectful to any any of the previous managers. Um but yeah, the interest in the football club has gone through the roof over the last 18, 18 months. And also what helps is the FA Cup runs, is the Cup runs, and they're uh, the bread and butter, certainly of this football club, because that has probably kept this club afloat over the years because we were a fan-owned football club. And the FA Cup runs that this football club and the tradition and history that they had in the Cups has no doubt put this club in a, in, in a healthy position. But um, yeah, look, uh, I I have to I have to be very very complimentary of the product. I have to be very complimentary of the quality that's filtering down from Premier League, from Championship into League One and into League Two, and uh, the opponents are getting stronger and stronger. And it's um it's a totally different league now than I'll take you back. I don't like looking back, but it, it was a totally different league than when I've played in it or when I've coached in it. So uh, things have things have, have really, really pushed on. Not only the the, the product or, or the teams, the finances, but the facilities as well. 
have uh, have come on tenfold as well. And I can get a little bit of that at home as well. Like I, I watch a lot of the League of Ireland and I can get a bit of that at home. The crowds are growing. The facilities are getting better. The product is getting better. The players are improving. So all in all, I just think football in general is 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 a fastly improving sport. It's becoming a more technical sport, and um, it's certainly gone on tenfold as to where it used to be. Because years ago, you had players, you had teams, and they were coached just to kick the ball long, just to smash it up the field, just to compete. Nowadays, the technical side of the game, technology and access to games. Everything has gone through the roof, and let's be honest, everybody's a everybody's a championship manager when they're sitting at home watching games. Everybody's a top top manager. It's very very easy. The exposure of football through through television rights as well has been huge. So we're seeing more and more games, training sessions. There's always people thinking outside the box how to uh, how to generate more interest and more income. So yeah, football has massive and huge exposure nowadays. So uh, that would be one of the reasons why it's getting better because the fans are now coming out and turning out and without the fans, uh, you can't do anything in football. And it just goes to show the strength of support. If support are coming through the turnstiles, the football club can grow to build and the football club can develop with that, with a, a strong fan base. And two more final questions on Newport County. And I just want to finish in with one quick question because I know you're an Irishman. So for a fellow Irishman to another Irishman, I just want to finish with a question on Republic of Ireland. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, Newport County, I suppose... You're playing Barrow this weekend, tough opponents, a great season under Pete Wilde at the moment uh, in terms of they're obviously trying to push on and they have firmly uh, are trying to set themselves up for the playoffs and maybe a run towards the end of the season and extending their season. And I suppose that's obviously the goal for Newport County. You're only five points off, so it has to be the, the goal for E is to try and gay crash that uh, playoff pitcher, hopefully. Uh, if if at all uh, possible, and I suppose Graham, uh, is that uh, your players? Do you see that inside? Is that what you're working to? Is that the be all and end goal now to maybe try and snatch a fifth or a sixth place uh, finish if all possible and extend your season and getting into the playoffs? Would that be seen as a hugely successful season for Newport County? I. I... To be honest, I don't want to come across as, as 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 boring, but it's not something that entered our mind. We are we're two points short of the playoffs and five points short of Barrow. Barrow were in sixth place, um, and they've got sixty one points. Um, so we we we're, we're short of Barrow by by five or six points. Um, seventh place is up for grabs, which we're two points short of. So to turn around in this club, as I say, over the last twelve months has been has been huge. It's been remarkable, really. When we walked through the front door, we were fighting the relegation zone. The place was doom and gloom. And as I say, three thousand two hundred fans were there, and there was no um, the, the, the lack in a confidence. There was no enjoyment, and the turnaround of it now to go from where we were to where we are on a lesser budget with less lesser players, given what we had to put up in the summer, losing uh, four big big players because of uh, the the one point two million uh, losses that we'd made. Um, yeah, so look, we've come a long, long way uh, to, to to talk about playoffs. I think is 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 is, is really, really uh, not something we want to get involved in. We just want to win our next game. We will let the others talk about playoffs. We let the others um, get excited and and things like that. I've been in the playoffs so many times as as as, as player, as coach, and as manager. And um, it's it's something that you know it's it, it's it's a great it's great achievement and it will be a super super achievement if 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 we could achieve it but it's not something that we we sit down and we aim for we talk about our philosophy our thought process monday to friday is win the next game and whoever that may be against uh, whoever the opponent is whether that be home or away win the next game plain simple and easy gather up as many points as we can our first target is obviously to go uh, was was uh, to get to fifty points. We've achieved that. Our second target was then to get past fifty seven points, which we accumulated last season, and um, that was our total points haul of last season. So we want to uh, surpass that. Um, anything other than uh, anything after that, then will be a huge, huge bonus. Look, if it's there and we can reach it, no doubt you'll go and you'll try. But um, you know, I don't want people's expectation levels to, to to start jumping too quickly and start getting ahead of themselves. We have to remember where we are, who we are, and we have to remember what the, our circumstances is. And our circumstances are a lot, lot more unfortunate than other clubs. 
And for us to be competing where we are competing at this moment in time, I take my hat off to this football club. I take it off to the supporters, the players, the management, the staff, because they've absolutely dug deep this season. And to gather up 55 points at this stage of the season is a tremendous, tremendous achievement. And there's no chance in the world I'm going to start putting anybody under any more pressure than they need to be under. Yeah. And I suppose, Graham. lastly, in terms of role models, in terms of going forward, you see the big traditional names in this division, MK Dons, Bradford City, and um, but little behold, little old Mansfield Town uh, sit on the top of the division and uh, after a terrific season, uh, five of their last uh, eight games are at home. They could be heading uh, for League One, something that they haven't been for many, many a year in terms of that. So when we see the success of what Mansfield Town are doing, uh, does that give the likes of Newport County to say, well, hold on, it was Mansfield Town were probably in a similar position to where what, what we are this year or even the year, the year year before that as well. So if they can arise to that, maybe Newport County can maybe the following year follow where Mansfield Town are probably heading. No, no, Mansfield have never been, um, unfortunately, they've never been little old and they've never been um, short of a bob or two. Mansfield are probably one of the biggest budgets in the division and they've probably got one of the biggest squads in the division and they've probably had that fortunate for uh, the last 10, 12 years. They've been trying to get out of the division 14 years, but uh, Mansfield have always been a club in the division with, uh, with a huge, huge uh, financial clout. Um, they they uh, very successful and rich owners and fair play to them. Um, they, they've Mansfield have had that. But like I say, he's, Nigel Clough has done a brilliant job and it just goes to show that no matter how much money you have, it's about getting the best out of your players and it's about putting that squad together. Um, it's about putting that, that, that group and getting them to go out on a Saturday afternoon. And I think Mansfield will win the league and I think they totally deserve to win the league because they've been really, really strong. Um, and it's probably been an accumulation of the last 10, 12 years that they've they've failed to, uh, to, to, to mount any, any serious challenges that they probably learned from and they probably gathered up all them learning experience, all them hard times. And uh, Nigel now, again, like I'm a big advocate at time. Managers need time. Nigel, this is Nigel's third season as well. So um, he's had plenty of time to build that squad and fair play to him. He's built a really, really good squad and I do hope he goes on and wins the league because he's a really good guy and he knows his way around football. But if a manager like Nigel Clough, you, you have to give him time. So uh, therefore, I say that to all the young managers coming in as well. You need time. Time is the biggest and the most important factor of any managerial uh, Ram, and that just proves that um, Mansfield have been really patient with Nigel, and they've given him as much backing as he could. And Nigel has, well, hopefully, not yet, but hopefully he will reward them this year, this this summer, um, with, uh, with 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 promotion. Um, they they have been really really strong financially over the years, but it just goes to show, irrespective of your finance, it's about what happens on the pitch, and it's about putting that team, it's about getting that recruitment right, and getting your philosophies across to the players. Um, so yeah, maybe you, you're you're right after after years and years of trying, maybe this might be might be Mansfield's uh, Mansfield's year, but Mansfield have always been one of those teams that hold major financial clout in League Two. And final question from me to you, uh, Graeme Coughlin, for the last minute or so before I let you go. Um, a passionate Irishman always wore the tricolour, uh, the green, white and uh, gold, uh, the colours of I Ireland on, on your sleeve, uh, where you were playing in Ireland, where you were playing uh, with the, uh, in England uh, in terms of that. When you look at, at the moment with everything going on in Ar Ireland and uh, the current situation, it, does it fill you with sort of grimace or plight or does it almost feel like it's a new dawn uh, in terms of optimism but when you see so many people linked to the job and turning it down and sort of stuff like that can you understand it can you say can you struggle to see why Ireland are currently in this position or do you think maybe that we've reached the bottom of the well now that all we can do is start moving the ladder and moving upwards up the rungs um 
listen, I'm, I'm, I love my country. I'm as passionate as, as anybody, and uh, and that's all we ever try to do over here. Try to make, uh, try to try to fly the flag and make people proud. Um, yes, the last few years has been has been bad. It's been terrible. Uh, let's be honest. We, we've we've had some bad defeats. We've had some bad bad days. But again, football. You know, I spoke earlier on about this divide, the two, two divisions, division of 12 and 12 over over in uh, the EFL, over here in England. International football is, is is similar. There is only six, seven, eight international teams that can be successful or that will be successful. Unfortunately, we're not one of them. Uh, we have to find a way of playing. We have to find a style of, of play. We have to find a system. We have to find principles. And, and, and more importantly, we have to find our own DNA we can't be trying to do what we've done over the last two three years we can't be trying to pass teams like France and Holland off the pitch that just that's just impossible that's nonsense you can't you just can't do that we've never been able to do that we have to find our own way our own niche we have to build the international team the international camps as if they are football league clubs training camps because you have to we have to punch above our weight and I just cannot see how we are attempting to pass the Hollands, the Francis off the football pitch because I just I don't think that will ever ever work. So finding a different way, finding our own way, finding our own DNA, putting our own principles, our own philosophies on it needs needs to be done. Now Mick done it brilliantly, uh, Jack done it brilliantly, and um, so so we need to find somebody of that ilk of that mould who can who who can uh, who can do that for us and for the country. And we all remember the great days, the good old days. Of 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 uh, competing against the top teams, of getting the championships, and I, I travelled abroad myself to many a championship and to watch Ireland many and many a time. And I've lost my way over the last five six years following Ireland. Um, I, I've not been able to get across the games or, or get away to, to to watch games. And if I'm being honest, I've not put myself out of the way to go and go and watch them because uh, obviously of what I, of what we were looking at. But um, yeah, look, they can give us all these stats about bringing this young player in and that young player in. Football and international football is about the here and now. I've heard so much nonsense about the, the last three, four years. I've heard a process. Well, what process? I I, I, I I failed to find when that word was mentioned and I listened to it till like they were blue in the face over the last four or five years. Process, process, process. I failed to see what process we were walking towards. I still failed to see what process we were walking towards. And it has set us back years in the coefficient rankings. We're going into groups now where, where two, three opponents are stronger than us. And that has been over the last three, four years. And we can't allow that to happen for the next three or four years. Otherwise, we'll just fall into the wilderness and we'll never make tournaments. We'll never be competitive again if we carry on doing what we're doing. Yeah. On that note, uh, Graeme Coughlin, uh, thanks for joining us today to give us an insight into Newport County. We wish you all the best against Barrow at the weekend and obviously a strong finish uh, to the end of the season in League Two. Obviously, uh, you're doing Wales proud, uh, staying there with Cardiff City and Swansea. You're flying the, the flag as the third, uh, the third uh, team for uh, Wales uh, in terms of uh, English football. But for the moment, for me, Jim Conlon, to you, Graeme Coughlin, stay safe, take care and God bless, sir. Take care. Thank you, Jim. Take care. Take care.